Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. My name is Derek. I'm the APJ Principal Technologist at SUSE. Um, today, I'm going to cover about um, how application developer or the DevOps teams can make use of the GitOps-based application delivery approach to handle the distribution of their application uh, into multi-cloud environment using an open source tool called SUSE Rancher. So I hope you will find this session helpful uh, as part of adding knowledge to uh, your development uh, domain. So let me start with uh, why multi-cloud strategy uh, is the company uh, looking for the way to go. Well, uh, the idea is very simple. Basically, you want to distribute your workloads across two or more clouds uh, in order to reduce risk, or you want to minimize the downtime to provide better resilience uh, to, to give a better SLA or the uh, service to your customers. And also, you may also want to uh, eliminate the use of your in-house on-prem infrastructure and move directly to more cloud uh, um, environment to enjoy the elasticity, the pay-as-you-go uh, flexibility that you, you can earn from there in order to gain the potential cost savings as well. So these are the good points uh, for handling the uh, workloads across multiple clouds. But then here it also comes with the challenges. The challenges is that um, it, if you move into different cloud, different cloud may have their own specific technologies, specific protocols, specific um, um, database or, or things that you need to handle. That adds the complexity in the infrastructure, in network and to the whole overall data center. For example, the security, you need to expand the scope of consideration of it. Not only that, but it also makes things uh, unable, easy for the IT team to be able to have a central control of the entire landscape of your infrastructure. So uh, some of the departments, some of the user may, may spin up their own application that runs out of the governance of the uh, organization uh, in the cloud. That is not ideal uh, for the company to protect the customer data, for example. So they, it's essential to have central control and feasibility to, to govern whatever they are running their application in the cloud environment. And needless to say, security uh, is also a challenge. And because it uh, dispersed across to multiple uh, environments, to have a consistent security governance is also a challenge uh, for a lot of organization. Um, last but not the least, for the DevOps teams or for the developers, they are more concerned on how they can consistently uh, be able to deliver their application to distribute it to uh, different cloud environments. And they are still under control. They know uh, is the version is exactly the way that it is going to be delivered. These are the key things that they need to uh, resolve in order to uh, have a good multi-cloud strategy. And so here today, we're going to talk about a modern solution uh, that will tackle this angle, uh, the multi-cloud strategy adoption. So first is that for wherever that you run, uh, nowadays, you can make use of the open source technology uh, called Kubernetes to be able to abstract your underlying infrastructure, no matter it's on your own on-prem data center or on your public cloud. Basically, you can standardize it. You expose the same uh, infrastructure management capability wherever it is. Um, even in the edge area of the branch or, or some uh, uh, edge, location, you can still use Kubernetes to abstract it so that you can have a conformant, consistent infrastructure base wherever you are running your application. And then you need to have a tool 
to help you to centralize all your control, to give better visibility on across all your infrastructure, to oversee all your applications running across multiple clouds. And with this, then you can apply a consistent uh, security governance measures on your infrastructure because it's been standardized. You have a better way to uh, apply this security control consistently wherever it is. And there's one more thing that we can do. That is the GitOps-based application delivery. With the GitOps-based approach, you can have a better way to deliver your application um, onto this kind of platform. So all this modern solution is, uh, has already been proven and used by an open source technology called Rancher and the fleet uh, solution. So basically, these are the key things that it can address to. But how this solution would work? Actually, uh, in our infrastructure environment, assuming everything is running on Linux system, it could be some commercial Linux, it could be some open source Linux distro that the IT team is familiar with to operate in, wherever it is, we can always attract the entire infrastructure with a certified Kubernetes distribution to help you to abstract and, and make the infrastructure more automatable, uh, more immutable to be able to provide the flexibility, portability, the consistency that you need across different uh, infrastructure environments. For example, uh, with the uh, SUSE Rancher suite, they have the RKE Rancher Kubernetes engine which is a certified Kubernetes distribution to help you uh, to make your infrastructure uh, to be abstracted with the Kubernetes easily on your own data center. And likewise, if you need to enable your edge area to run your same application uh, in the container world, then uh, we also have the K3S, uh, which is a lightweight version of the Kubernetes to help you to run Kubernetes platform to enable it to run your application on the edge environment, such as the branch office, such as your development environment where uh, the equipment over there has a very limited resources to run, but you can still uh, make use of the lightweight version of this Kubernetes to run your application as well. In the public cloud, they also have the Kubernetes environment to offer as well is also a very popular option for application developer to deploy their application onto it. So these are the key uh, infrastructure space where we need to manage and we have to centralize manage it. And that's why we have this very popular open source tools called SUSE Rancher to provide a single pane of glass of control on all these different Kubernetes clusters across the entire organization, be it on data center, on cloud, or on the edge environment. It can be visualized consistently and manage it uh, in a automated, uh, consistent way. For example, for each environment, if you need to have Kubernetes version management, you need to upgrade it, or you need to provision it into a new cloud environment to run uh, your application in that is closer to your customer, then you can use these tools uh, to help you to easily get the job done in an automated way, uh, following the best practice from the industry. Not only that, it also provides the uh, secure control to enable your big team. Uh, different team can have different access to different clusters, to different part of your cloud, uh, to carry out their own development work or to manage their own projects. Uh, uh, in their organization. It has the integration with the external integration provider uh, to, to help them to onboard all the users uh, according to the organization's preferred uh, identity uh, management provider. It can support the LDAP, SAMO, or the AD way, uh, whatever you name uh, that is commonly used in the industry it can be easily integrated to help onboarding your customer to access your whole infrastructure environment. And there's other security measures uh, to help you to 
make sure your uh, Kubernetes configuration is uh, runtime secure. It includes the CIS benchmark uh, scanning uh, regularly on your cluster to ensure the settings are uh, hardened enough to run your workloads securely uh, on this platform. So there are more to say. But for the developers, it also comes with other add-on that can help you to run your application on the uh, cloud native platform uh, more effectively. For example, it comes with the service mesh Istio package to help the development team to run their uh, microservices uh, more securely, uh, more controllable uh, in the cloud native environment. Likewise, if we also have the uh, projects for providing better monitoring uh, with the Prometheus and Grafana, all these tools uh, that is also coming uh, with the SUSE Ranger. Those things are basically to help the development team the, uh, to run their application much more easier and much more smooth in the runtime environment. So these are the foundation that we are going to have. And with this, that's why we have uh, a lot of customers, a lot of users that we see in the community um, is using Rancher to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters. Uh, it could be running on any major cloud providers. Uh, it can be running on their own data center, wherever their application is running, it can be uh, managed by Rancher alone to help them to make the operation much, much more easier and under control. So let's take it as an example. For example, you have this centralized uh, server, the Rancher to be able to manage all your workloads across multiple clouds. You have maybe in this example, you have some application running in Singapore uh, on the AWS cloud, for example, and then you have uh, the same application um, that is provide better resilience, but is running on Sydney, on another public cloud, Azure, and you also have some workloads running on your own data center as well. So you, you the team, uh, the IT operation team and the development team can make use of the rancher to be able to manage all this application across uh, multiple environments. Uh, wherever the user are to access which environment, they can still use the same uh, tool to consistently uh, uh, manage their workloads across different um, cloud technology and different places. But for developers, if they need to uh, deploy their application, uh, one of the features that I'm going to cover more today is about the fleet. Uh, fleet is basically a GitOps tools to help the development team to deploy and package and deploy their applications uh, onto different environment. So with Fleet, it can simply uh, set up as a control to monitor the uh, Git um, repository to be able to scan is there any changes in the um, deployment scripts. And then it can also direct the deployment into different environment or even to apply different configurations according to the environment's needs. So that is uh, what the fleet can help uh, as part of the rancher to be able to make the application delivery through the GitOps approach um, to, to deploy the applications onto different environment under the IT operation team's control. So if we look at this in detail, you can see that uh, fleet is at the core of this rancher management server. So you can set up the um, project to monitor the Git, uh, which contains all the deployment uh, scripts that you will have. It could be in Helm, it could be in Kubernetes uh, manifest format. And then it will regularly to monitor uh, the script, whether there's a change on it. Once the change trigger, then you will try to reconcile to the state that where it should be. Maybe you define that, oh, whenever this script uh, has changed, then you should be uh, uh, provision the application into your target clusters. 
So the target cluster that you, you are going to do will be uh, um, selected through the labeling mechanism. You can label your cluster that you want to target to, and then you can define in the controller uh, what kind of label that it has to match in order to uh, deploy the applications on it. The deploy mechanism is also very scalable. Uh, so each cluster would also have its own agent to pull uh, to check the desired states, uh, whether the application should be in effect uh, in their uh, respective cluster. If it's not, then it will try to pull the desired state, uh, make sure the, the controller will apply the new changes on it. So with this mechanism, that's why uh, the, the GitOps-based approach with Fleet can support up to a million clusters uh, from a single control plane uh, to deploy their application. This is very useful as we observe in some of the industry when they need to deploy uh, their applications onto the edge device. This becomes very handy uh, to help them to control where the applications uh, has been deployed into each individual small devices. So this is the basic uh, mechanism and idea of the fleet. For more information, I've put up a link over there to have the technical architecture reveal if you're interested. So with all this, let me show you how from end to end it works. Uh, let's learn together how this open source technology, uh, Rancher and Fleet can put together uh, to manage your uh, clusters and also uh, manage multiple cloud environment, as well as uh, we will see how we can deploy the applications on it. To start with, uh, let me uh, have a look at this lab scenario. So with this scenario, what we are going to do is we are going to spin up a rancher management server, which can help you to manage the multiple Kubernetes clusters uh, distributed across multiple clouds. And in this example, what we are going to do is we set up just one single individual virtual machine instance uh, to, to just stand up the uh, rancher management control plane uh, to manage all your Kubernetes clusters and applications uh, on it. Now, you can see that this is uh, just a single point of failure, but this is just more for uh, demonstration purpose. Indeed, if you want to make it more resilient in the production environment, usually people will set up three uh, virtual machines to run as a base Kubernetes cluster, and then we run Rancher on top of it. This can provide uh, all the resilience uh, built in from Kubernetes from its foundation and to provide the high availability uh, to for this control plane. Um, so in production, you can see that this will usually be running on three virtual machines, but for now, we are just only one uh, for run. And for each sample clusters, I just make it very simple, very lightweight. Uh, we have uh, just three virtual machines running on it. In Kubernetes, they have the uh, control plane, the master node. Uh, in production, they, there will be usually at least uh, three master nodes uh, running. So, um, but for the sake of this demonstration purpose, again, I just uh, run one uh, to just demonstrate the functionality. So, and then we have two worker nodes uh, running on in, inside this cluster. So the same happened in AWS Cloud and in Azure Cloud. We will be using Rancher. We'll show you how we can use Rancher to uh, let you simply point and click to be able to uh, provision the Kubernetes cluster that is uh, running on these cloud providers and um, being managed by Rancher so that the developer team or operation team can simply go through the user interface to handle their application from there. So of course, the user side, when they need to access to these workloads, they can still uh, access it either directly or uh, just like in this community, uh, make use of the API management tools to direct the traffic to the right side uh, uh, to, to these applications. So this is the basic setup uh, for, for this uh, lab exercise. 
And then what we are going to do is to show you how we can set up the uh, Rancher uh, management tools, the software uh, on a single Linux uh, virtual machine. And then we are going to uh, configure it. We will grab the uh, co uh, respective uh, cloud credentials uh, from the different cloud providers. And then we configure it into Rancher. And then lastly, we will also uh, make use of the Rancher to provision uh, these clusters onto the uh, cloud environment. In this case, it's the AWS and Azure. Followed by that, once we have the environment ready, then we will show you how the DevOps team can simply configure a Rancher continuous delivery, the fleet system, to be able to constantly uh, monitor their deployment scripts. Um, and then to deploy the application at their wish into the target cluster. We will also explore how you can further customize your target uh, configuration uh, for, for each application running on individual environment as well. So let, let's start with the very first part, uh, the lab setup. It's very easy if you want to follow, you can also uh, download the, the the slide that we have, we provide all the uh, recipe, the steps here for you uh, if you want to experiment it. So the first thing we are going to do is uh, to install Rancher Server. The latest version is 2.6, which is just released uh, a couple of weeks ago. And then we are going to deploy it onto a single virtual machine. So there are script to help you to automate all this. Uh, we just copy and paste into it. The Linux environment that uh, you need to run is just uh, using two vCPU and four gig memory, uh, but it can be running on any popular uh, mainstream Linux dis distros. Basically, as long as it can support to run Docker, then it will be run in this case. Uh, just want to make a further note that if um, you are going to deploy in production, uh, the Rancher is not running on Docker, but it will be running on some Kubernetes cluster with high availability so that it can be more resilient uh, as a control plane for all your clusters. Um, and the security rules here is very basic. It's just opening the standard port. Let's take a look at how it can be done. So in here, I've got a Linux box here. Uh, I also, on the left-hand side, I have the menu. What I'm going to do is to install the Kubernetes tools here. So I just copy the script and it will install the Kubernetes tool like ham uh, kubectl for me. And then I just copy the scripts that I need to deploy the Rancher server. Uh, as a control plane for all my multi-cloud. It's very simple, just one line command uh, to just plug it into the Linux. But wait, it looks like, oh, in this uh, Linux box, I don't have the, the Docker started. So let me start it. So I just uh, fire a command to start the Docker in order to be able to let me to run this uh, command. Let me also enable it next time after the system reboot, the Docker will automatically start. So now, after I've done that, let me try to run this command again. Oh, okay. I shouldn't copy from the previous uh, screen. Let me copy from the uh, workbook again. So I just copy the command and this time it should work. Now it's detecting the Rancher image is not there and is going to fetch from the container registry. And after a while, then it will be up and running. So you just downloaded images uh, in the Linux box. It's just kickstarted. It will do some uh, time to self-initialize itself. And after a few minutes, then it will be able to uh, run what we need to do is to just give it a few minutes and then we grab the public IP of this Rancher management server. Then we can start using the user interface uh, to help manage our 
cloud, multi-cloud environment. Now, let's go to this uh, public IP address. Now you can see the initial dashboard is looking for the initial password. So I just follow the instruction and look up the container ID and check the log as it's instructed to grab the initial password. Once you get it, then you, you can simply reset it to your own and accept the terms of use. Then you can get into the initial dashboard page where you can start managing multiple environments uh, in here. So you can go to cluster management and get into the cloud credentials. So in the cloud credentials, you can say which cloud that you want to manage. If you want to manage AWS, for example, then you need to provide the, uh, your access and secret key that Amazon is giving you and you point the uh, default region that you want to manage. And then you just uh, save it in the ranger. Likewise, you can do the same for Azure. What you need to do is to grab the subscription ID, client ID and secret uh, from the Azure portal, and then you can save it here. So once you set up the cloud credentials here, what you can do next is you just go to the cluster management, and then you can start create your very first cluster from Rancher on, let's say the Amazon EC2 instance. Um, so what you will be doing is I'm going to set up the Nook template to specify where my Kubernetes cluster is going to run. In this case, is in Singapore and it's running on a single region. I just uh, set up the network and then the security group is using what Ranger is recommended. And I can specify the uh, VM size, the instance size, how big it is. In this case, I choose a large instance to run. And then I give the right privilege, uh, specifying the IAM instance profile. And I lastly put a name on this Ranger template. Then this is the VM template that I'm going to use to build up my Kubernetes cluster on Amazon Cloud. So I give a name of my cluster. And then this is the master node. I use this template. It should have the etcd database and the control plane. And then this is the worker node. Worker node is where your application will be running. So in this example, I just run two as uh, the role for worker. There are a lot of options that you can configure, but for now I just leave it as is. And then I just submit the create button. What Rancher will be doing is to help me to provision it, uh, to build the cluster on Amazon. What I'm going to do now is to do the same thing on Azure. As you can see, the user experience is very similar. So the uh, team, once they learn it, no matter where they are operating, then you are still using the same way to manage your own infrastructure. And in this case, I'm going to do it in Sydney and I specify the availability set that is required by Microsoft Azure, the resources group that I'm going to put in. I specify the fault domain that I'm going to do uh, to control the resilience that I, I need to. Specify the uh, network settings and that should be it. So network security group is all good the image, and again, it's the uh, instance size that I need to be aware of. So as I choose any one of them, uh, that is appropriate for my workload. In this case, I just choose one of these. And then lastly, again, just give it a name. So once I finish give it a name, then I should be able to, to start using it. As you can see here, I just name it, and then this is my Azure cluster. Again, just one master node with database and control plane. And then you can have the uh, worker node, and you have two uh, worker node over there and give the space to run application. And then once I save it, then it will show up again, as you can see here. So it will take a while to provision and then uh, 
after a while, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, then your cluster should be ready and you can start exploring it. As you can see here, you can see uh, how the infrastructure is look like, how many nodes are running, how many applications are running. Everything can be uh, seen from this simple user interface. You can see how the resources are consumed. So this is how easy it is to run the cluster management. So again, uh, the key step just to recap is to capture the cloud credentials and then you can start using it to provision it. So once the environment is ready, then let's take a look at uh, how we can deploy the applications from there. Let me go through the live demo with my browser. So as you can see here, this is the uh, Rancher user interface. Let me log in as an administrator. Now, this is the default homepage where you can see these are the workloads that we just uh, um, used, as you can see here in the cluster management. Then you can see that these are the platform AWS and Azure that is uh, available for me to deploy the applications onto it. So if I explore it, let's say on AWS, then I can see uh, the capacity available for me to deploy my application. And likewise, I can also easily switch to check uh, the Azure as well. So now what we can do is we go to this uh, global apps and then there's one option called continuous delivery. So with this continuous delivery, what we're going to do is uh, I have this fleet examples. I have some deployment scripts to, to deploy applications onto one or multiple clusters. What I'm going to do is this is uh, um, put it in the GitHub so that all the uh, changes that I made will be kept track by the Git um, uh, software. But then I want to make use of the uh, continuous delivery, the fleet to be able to help me to monitor the project that I have. Whenever there's a change, then it's a trigger to deploy the application into my target clusters. And as you can see here, this is the cluster available that I can uh, deploy to. In this case, it's the AWS and Azure cluster that we have just created. Uh, what I'm going to do is to define the target cluster group. Uh, I give them some labels uh, to be able to deploy uh, based on the matching label. So before that, let me check each cluster, what label do they have? Right now, they don't have much label, but what we can do is we can edit the configuration and then we can add label here for this AWS cluster. For example, this is environment equals to dev and i have a label for aws which is uh, environment equals to dev and likewise i'm going to do it for azure as well so i just added the configuration add a label uh, environment equals to dev so i have two clusters with the same label right now so once I've done that, it applied, and then Azure would also have the same label key here. So now I'm going to define the cluster group that can help me to specify the application that I'm going to deploy to will be deploying to this cluster group. So for now, let me define the cluster group as cluster dev, for example, and then I add the cluster selector which will help me to select which cluster to deploy to. So long as the, um, the selection has the matching label, uh, then it will be included in this cluster group. So for example, I just want to include um, in list for the uh, cluster that are marked as development environment, for example, then it will tell me here, two existing clusters are matching with this and it, it is the case, then I just create. And now I have this cluster group. Then you can see that these are the target cluster that I'm going to deploy the application onto. 
And now what we can do is I go to the Git repo, I can create one and I can give it whatever name. Let's say this is a simple app. What I'm going to do is to put in my Git repository here because it's public. I don't need to authenticate, but if you need to, then you can also specify the secret or the SSX secret uh, in here. So I need to check which branch it will be using. The here is the master, which is good master here. And then I need to specify because this has multiple uh, things here. Uh, what I want to do is just to specify here, single cluster helm. I want to use this as an example to deploy the uh, application called Gasbook onto my cluster. So what I need to do is I just say single cluster ham as the path that I am going to add to. So the path will be single single cluster ham. And then I can specify this is the target and I want to say into the test namespace. And off we go. What it will be doing, it will just set up uh, to keep regularly check the Git repository. And then if I look at it, then what you will be doing is to deploy uh, the target application that I have into my cluster. In this case, it's a guest book. So it looks like it's ready now. It happens simultaneously onto my cloud uh, environment on AWS and on Azure. Let's take a look at this environment. Let's say the AWS one. I should have a project namespace called test. This is the case, test. And then I should have the workloads, some ports running, like the front end, the redis um, here. And then lastly, I should have the service to access to it. So I can simply click on it and to access the guest book that I have. Uh, in here. Likewise, I can do the same with my Azure as well. I just check the service again to make sure it's also available to access. All right, there may be some network issue, but never mind. That that is uh the case here. And this is how easy it is to run the GitOps here uh, in this demo. So if you want to know more, then you can always uh, go to this SUSE Rancher community. Uh, we have a lot of users uh, growing every day uh, to learn from each other how to make use of the open source technology to help them to run their application on more um, more effectively on multiple cloud environment and also to leverage the tools available on the open source world to help them to collaborate better, to gain better productivity. So we have a regular uh, training, we have regular class from the experts, from the, uh, the development team to talk about all this uh, approach and tools. Please feel free to, to join us. Um, uh, you just sign up from this link. And here are some further reference that you can take away uh, if you want to understand more about uh, what the uh, GitOps, what the uh, SUSE Ranger can do for you to help you to manage your whole organization infrastructure to, di to distribute your application across multiple cloud more effectively. You can always uh, learn uh, from all this resources and join the community uh, to, to uh, know more about it. So um, with this, that's the end of my uh, presentation today. Thank you. If you have any questions, just let me know. So otherwise, thank you.